Hey, this is the day the Lord has made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Patrick Quinn here with Faith Moment, bringing you Faith Moment. Time to um, check your faith level in God and, um, and see where you are, where God is concerned. Are you listening? God bless you this morning, wherever you are, under the sound of my voice. I bring you greetings in Jesus' name. Well, another day that the Lord has been good to us, and um, we're just going to be glad in it. All right? We're going to be glad in it. Do me a favor. Just uh, call somebody a friend. Um, Allison, God bless you for coming on the, on the um, online, online with me this morning. Please share the message. Share the broadcast. Share it with everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for being a blessing to us, granting us another opportunity to live, move, and have our being in fulfilling, oh God, your plan concerning us on the face of this earth. We are grateful to you, Holy Spirit, for teaching us and leading us into all truth as Jesus promised us uh, by the finished work of him on the cross. We thank you. Continue to do that until... We have accomplished all that we were sent here to do and uh, see the Father face to face until Jesus come. Amen and amen. We, I bless God for you wherever you are. I bless God for you. Um, my assignment and my job is to bring you um, the Word of God to help you in your growth and understanding uh, in the things concerning him, all right, in the things concerning him and all that he has given unto us. We've been dealing with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the fact that uh, the Holy Spirit, as promised by Jesus, is here with us. Linda, God bless you, all right, as promised by Jesus Christ, he promised us the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has, um, has come to be to dwell with us and to be in us. So the Holy Spirit is here. Now, it's very important that I bring you this message for you to not only think of the Holy Spirit because there are other spirits imitating the works of the Holy Spirit of God. There are other spirits. As we see even in our natural life, there are other people imitating other people. There are car manufacturers imitating other car manufacturers. There are, there are, you know, I mean, you understand where I'm coming from. And so it is in the realms of the spirit that there are spirits who are also on this earth imitating the, the Holy Spirit. And uh, they operate through the flesh, okay? They operate through the flesh. As God uses flesh and blood, so they operate through flesh and blood. So I'm bringing you to that place of understanding. Beloved, when you hear or see the scripture saying, test all spirits, there's a reason for that. God does, doesn't say things and God don't do things without a reason. There is a reason for why God says test all spirits. Because there's a lot of spirits who have been also uh, been cast down to this earth according to Revelation chapter 12. Now, I want to show you that very important because it is very important for you to know that it's, it's not only the Holy Spirit operate, operating on this earth through you. Now, if you do not be in the position to discern the, the work of the Holy Spirit and that of other spirits, you will think that it is the Holy Spirit that is operating. All the time and he it may not it may not be so it may not be so are you listening Rebecca God bless you it may not be so so you must be able as a child of God to discern I'm using that word very seriously to discern or to be able to decipher between the move of the Holy Spirit the work of the Holy Spirit and that of other spirits who were cast down to this earth and followed Satan down here. Are you listening to me? So go with me. Let me show you that. 
um, because be, be, beloved angels are spirit. Do you see angels? They are spirit. They manifest themselves sometimes through humans. Yes, yes. I I I have experienced that myself. I've experienced that. All right, myself. Yes, indeed. I think I've shared that uh, with many of you before. Where um, after you know taking care of the inmates' children, normally every year have a um, uh, um, uh, end of year party, you know, for the inmates' children and, um, you know, be a blessing to them. All right, I'll share this story for those of you who have not heard that before and then quickly get to the Word of God. Um, so right after we finished all that and um, it was one, I remember this year was one of those hectic years. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And uh, we have to pull everything from this ministry. I have to just pull everything because our sponsors, you know, I mean, we were late basically in uh, sending our mails and all that request to our sponsors. And so we have to, you know, dig from individual stuff. And I mean, I, I emptied my whole house, you know, groceries just to put it all together to, um, you know, do something for this, this children at the end of the year. And so I was even left with nothing, left nothing at home. And I'm telling you was something, but it was all good. And I was tired. I remember right after the, um, the party, immediately I just, we finished cleaning and just sat down. Hey, now God bless you. Immediately I finished and I sat down to just take a rest. Here I hear somebody from downstairs shouting, um, bless afternoon to you too. That, um, hello. Um, is the reverend there? Oh, all I mean, all I said was, oh my good goodness, somebody is coming late. Somebody was coming late. So therefore, uh, and the food is finished. We have finished all that. Most of the kids have left. And that was one of those, uh, years that man, I, I mean, it was so, the atmosphere was so charged emotionally with parents. Most, and that was the first time I even realized that some of the parents, both parents are in jail. And um, the children are with grandmothers and all the adopted parents and, and what have you. So it was something. So here I hear, is the reverend there? I came down, I just came to the door and I saw this old man, old man. When I say old, is old. I came down closer to him and uh, he didn't talk much. All he did was just use his hand to, um, you know, communicate with me, just... Um, like follow him, follow me. So I follow him, not just about three steps next to the curb of um, the front frontage of the church building. And there was a car parked there. And um, it's one of those old Thunderbird American cars. Those of you who know that old kind of cars. And, um, you know, used to have those uh, leather top and it was torn. <clears throat> the leather was torn and I mean, the car looks like something that you, you know, you just picked it up from the junkyard. And um, so I follow him thinking. And then he opened the trunk of the car. My goodness. You know, there's this saying that don't mind the body, mind what is inside. Look for what is in there. I'm telling you, if you look at the, at the, you know, the outward size appearance of the car, you wouldn't even think. There was such groceries, and I'm talking about fresh groceries, because I do. I go to groceries, all right. Yes, I do. I do. I go. I go to groceries, you know, and do stuff. So, I know what it is. I mean, fresh groceries, and and what even marvelled me was a fresh turkey. I mean, big fat. I've never seen. Listen, every Thanksgiving, I mean, we have turkeys, and you know, and you know. Uh, Oven turkeys, and I, I know the sizes of turkeys. I've, I've distributed turkeys and all those things. So I know what I'm talking about. This was one of the fat, big fat turkeys that I haven't seen before. Big one. And frozen too. And you know that that came right, right from the, from the shopping, uh, shopping mall. All right. And it was in a bag. Everything. Shopping bags. And he said, pick them. So I'm picking this thing and I'm thinking, I thought he's coming to ask for food or something but he is rather giving and i took all these things back almost about 15 or 17 bags of uh, grocery bags full of groceries i mean canned food here this and all that and um and i put them out i put them out and 
put them in front of the church builder. I, interestingly, I didn't even call nobody to her. I don't know. You know what? When they, 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 you are in their presence, it's like your concentration is all on them. And so I finished and I said, thank you. And I'm thinking, he's one who's going to, then he says, no, come, come. And I follow him to the, to the passenger side of the car. Okay. Now this is two door car. When we talk about two door, that is only two doors in the front. There ain't no door at the back. So I, he took me closer to the, uh, the passenger side of the door. And there was an old lady. Interestingly, when I came at the trunk of the car, I didn't even see anybody sitting in the car. There was an old lady sitting in the front of the car. I mean, looks like uh, they started doing the hair and uh, she probably just left. They didn't finish doing the hair. The hair was all over the place. Oh my goodness. And it was an old lady. Old lady, wrinkled looking old lady. The hair was all over the place. And um, the, the man just, you know, beckoned to her and uh, did this, like did this. So she also reached out, you know, to the visor, okay, to the visor and um, pulled out an envelope, white, en white envelope. And I gave it to the man and the man gave it to me. And I said, thank you. Of course, I, I expected that there was some money in it. And I said, thank you. And so then he told me, but, you know, with his hand still, go, take, you know, like, take the food in. Beloved, this is why I'm saying this thing to you. I took the first, I put that envelope in my, in my shirt, in my pocket, and then I took the first two bags from the frontage of the church building inside, okay, inside the foyer, just inside the foyer of the, of the church, the entrance. So I turned to come and take the, I, I, to, you know, grab a couple of them. The car was gone, just like that. Trust me, I quickly ran to the middle of the road just to see the car going. I didn't see no car going, no car coming. I knew this was an angel. I had an angelic visitation. And I'm telling you, that was the second time. There was a first time also, which was a little small boy. But look at what I'm trying to say. Is that angels, however, sometimes uses flesh and blood. Are you listening? They use flesh and blood just to come and accomplish the assignment. And so I, I, I will tell you, yes, I've seen angels. Now, in the same way, the spirit of Satan or his angels use the same because they duplicate i want to tell you something here today why am we are talking about the fact that the holy spirit is come and you also need to be watchful about other spirits who may be imitating the holy spirit remember the the, the scripture tells you and i that satan do appear like the angel of light and so if you are not careful if you are not very, very careful and close to the Holy Spirit, you may think that what you have seen that looks godly may be from God, but it may be from the Holy Spirit. I mean, from the from the from from Satan, and that will have the end of it luring you into destruction. I'm telling you, I'm speaking from experience. Are you listening to me? That is why I keep saying, don't try to be, don't try to be a spiritual giant. Baby, you are not, you are, you are not <laughs> strong enough. What makes you that powerful is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. So if you know the Holy Spirit lives in you and you know he dwells with you, then you have to walk in the Spirit and not yield to the flesh in any way, shape, or form. All right? Any way, shape, or form. Hey, I salute you, angel from Brunei. God bless you. I hope you're all doing well in Brunei. Okay? Please share this broadcast to everyone. This is very important. Because the, 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 um, the, the angels that were thrown down here or kicked out of heaven, follow Satan down here, are still here operating. 
Now, maybe you don't know that uh, Satan has been cast down to the earth and he is still here with his demons, angels, or with spirits. So, let me show that to you and um, we will continue. Are you listening to me? So, open your Bibles now. Let's study some word. Okay? Go with me to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation, the 12th chapter. All right? Let me show you that real quick and then we'll get to where we to be revelations chapter 12 danos ham bibi god bless you we're talking about a conflict between the holy spirit and the flesh all right revelations chapter 12 okay let's take it from verse 7 verse 7 and war broke out in heaven war not just a fire there was a war broke out in heaven michael angel michael he's our warring angel Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought. But these dragon and his angels, they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. There was no place for them any longer. Why? Because uh, the dragon was cast out, verse 9, the dragon was cast out that old that serpent of old that serpent of old all right that serpent of old that serpent of old bishop elect joseph asari god bless you that serpent. listen i often say this that that serpent of old you see the serpent that serpent that was not killed in genesis has now become a dragon in revelation that serpent that that was not killed Adam didn't kill that serpent talking. Should have just killed that, 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 that thing. Now leaving it has become a dragon in Revelation here. So now the, old, the serpent of old called the devil. The serpent called the devil and Satan. Look at the names. Who deceives the whole world? He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Are you getting the revelation here? The devil was cast out to cast down to the earth and he came with his angels. Now, he's a spirit, and so the the the, the, the his followers, and so they are still here operating. They are still here operating as the Holy Spirit has also come and he's with us. So they imitate. The move and the work of the Holy Spirit. And if you are not careful, Prince, God bless you. If you are not careful, you will think, you will think that the work of the Holy Spirit, okay, or the, I mean, you will think that the work of this spirits are the work of the Holy Spirit. So when the when scripture talks about test of spirits, it is for you to be able to decipher. The Holy Spirit and that which is not the Holy Spirit and that is a very very serious area for every believer if you call yourself a child of God and a Christian you got to be this is the this is where you have to be so cautious very cautious if not you can fall why the scripture says that if not even the elect may be swayed even the elect beloved this is a serious thing and this has nothing to do again with which church you belong if you are not receiving the right word in that place and thinking that all you need is a miracle and a prophecy. All you need is not just a miracle and a prophecy. All you need is your understanding about the word of God and take it seriously and don't play with it. Don't play with it. Let me show you why you don't have to play with it. Let me show you why you don't have to play with this. So now you see that there was a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought this dragon, this Satan and his angels and they cast them out. So they are no longer living in heaven. They are down here on earth with you and I. Are you listening to me? Very important. Now watch this now. Verse 10. Then I, the loud voice came from heaven saying from heaven in heaven now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God 
and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out. Cast down. Verse 12. Just jump quickly because I want to get to my point. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, rejoice, and you who dwell in them. But now this is a message for you and I on this earth. Woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. Hey, the sea. I mean, the things you are hearing these days about, about sea, it's, amazing. It's, it's, it's not surprising. It's not surprising. So woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil, okay, has come down to you. Beloved, I am not saying this. This is the word of God. The devil has come down to you. Watch this now. Having great wrath. He's angry. He came with full of, of venom. Because he knows his time. He knows that he has a short time. He knows that he has a short time. He has a short time to do what? To get as many. Listen. Listen. If the devil was able to convince some percentage of the angels in heaven to follow him down here, beloved, don't think that you are just a match for him. Are you listening to me? Some of you who are so spiritual, thinking that you can go around trying to mess with him. That guy, listen, he I'm not I'm not here to, to raise him up, God forbid. But I'm here to bring you a message of understanding of who you are dealing with and for you to know that the flesh and the spirit there's a conflict between them both of them cannot coexist i'm going to read some things to you about the 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 attributes of the flesh and attributes of the holy spirit and see if you can have all of them in your whole in your life all of them together at the same time beloved no you can't no you cannot and so this is very important for you and I to understand. If we are going to be successful and win, are you listening to me? A lot of people are winning. A lot of people, you see them, well, they are making it financially and, and materially and sometimes as much as you as a child of God, you know your resources and your source is from God. You, you, you wish you have some of the things they have. Do you know where they're getting them from? Do you know where they are getting them from? Beloved, I'm telling you, the times we are living in here, it's very interesting times. And so just to remind you that Satan or the devil is here on earth in a very angry atmosphere. Look at John who wrote this revelation, also wrote John chapter 10, verse 10. Look at what he says. He says, the devil comes to steal. Satan comes to steal. To kill and to destroy. He didn't come to try to negotiate with you about anything. He did not come to you to suggest something to you. He came to steal, to kill and to destroy. Oh, but don't stop there. Jesus then followed him and says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Are you listening? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very serious business. Don't take it, don't take it lightly. So now that we find out Satan has been cast down to this earth, and it says, Woe to the inhabitant, inhabitants of the earth. Are you are you an inhabit, inhabitant of this earth? Are you inhabiting this earth? Yes, you are. And there's a warning to you that you got to be very careful. Very careful. Why do you have to be get okay? <laughs> Allison said that's why it's so murder on the earth. Yeah. You why do you have to be careful? You have to be careful because he's an angry person. And all that he wants to do is to get you to follow him also. He's already judged. The Bible says, condemned. And he knows his time is short. So this is why sometimes I say that beloved, the time if Satan even knows his time is short, what makes you think that you have a long, a long time to play around? It's, it's not, it, I mean, it's, this is not the time to play anymore. The time, those times to play are gone. 
they are gone beloved you have to take your 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 spiritual life very seriously not to say that you have to be so spiritual that you cannot have any you know time to enjoy your ice cream and all that no but you have to be spiritually sensitive you see the difference you have to be spiritually sensitive enjoy your life not to say you have to you know walk in fear no when the holy spirit comes in you there's no more fear but this is wisdom speaking to you but, but i mean this is wisdom are you listening to me so now go with me to romans chapter 8 and uh, let's see some scriptures there all right laying the foundation of the fact that there's a conflict between the holy spirit and uh, the flesh is to let you know that the holy spirit okay reveal the things of god to us the flesh okay reveals the mind and the plan of satan to you i'm mentioning his name because scripture mentioned his name the old serpent the devil satan lucifer whatever okay so we need to know that what we are doing is of the flesh or of the spirit all right now it's very important for you and i to to uh, to get this um um, um, scripture, which, which talks about the fact that uh, those who are, go, 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 that's it, Romans, put your finger there, we'll come to Romans, I want to show you something in Galatians, all right, Galatians chapter 5, or uh, verse 6, Galatians chapter uh, 6, sorry, Galatians chapter 6, all right, look at it, for he who sows to the flesh, all right, we'll come back to it, but I just want to bring that quickly, Okay, who, who he who sows to the flesh will reap corruption. He who sows to the flesh will reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will reap everlasting life. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. We are going to see this corruptible um, uh, signs, this corruptible signs. We're going to see them. And uh, if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap everlasting life. So put that in your mind. Now, come back now to uh, Romans 8, which I told you earlier, verse 1. Verse 1. I'm going to read some scriptures in here. All right. Therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. You got to walk when you are walking according to the Holy Spirit, According, you are walking according to the, the, the directions and instructions of the Holy Spirit. All right. The enemy cannot accuse you because he is the accuser. Remember, we saw we saw one of um, his traits in Revelation, as we just read, that the accuser of the brethren is no longer entertained in heaven. He's been cast down. The accuser. Are you listening? Accuser. That's what he does. He always wants to accuse you. All right, and bring condemnation and guilt of your past to you. And so you need to also know who you are in Christ and reply him when he starts bringing that, those things for him. For That's one of the strategies to bring you down. You got to remind him of his past when he was also kicked out of heaven. He was kicked out. Are you listening? Remind him too. Don't stand there for him to try to, because if you start having a, a conversation with him, that is, him, that is his way of getting your attention to want to floor you. He's been around for a long time, beloved. Don't, don't, don't try to spiritual, spiritualize this. Don't try to spiritualize this. Are you listening to, I'm teaching you something that is very important for your life. Now you can discuss this with your pastor. And share this broadcast with him as well if you are not getting such messages. Because by the end of the day, it is, it's almost like it's just not enough to say that I'm a Christian. It's just not enough. How many Christians are dying out of ignorance? How many Christians are living in, in, in lack and poverty? Yes, you have. Listen, you are, you are Christian because you have given your life to Jesus. To follow him as your lord and savior that makes you a christian yes heaven will be guaranteed for you but you are still down here 
you are still you haven't left yet and there is a reason why god put you and i here and we need to fulfill it and god says the plans he has for you and i they are plans of good not evil so they are good plans so if we don't have this understanding to find out those good things the promises god has given to us and be and take them and enjoy them then somebody will be using i said this thing here anything you don't understand cannot help you yesterday a pastor responded to that statement i made and saying that well uh, um 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 and moses moses didn't understand you know why god was sending him and all that but my uh, beloved brother when moses came to understood there was no more uh, ignorance. Are you listening to me? There was more, no more ignorance. Moses knew exactly what God has sent him to do. Yes, he didn't understand before. So what you don't understand cannot be a blessing to you. Therefore, you must have understanding. If you go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all thy getting, get understanding, be, uh, 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 fellow preacher, get understanding. So don't be saying, you know, fighting back and what you know, most of didn't understand. You need to get understanding because ignorance is the weapon in which you give to the enemy, the devil, for him to use it against you. Ignorance. And a lot of Christians are ignorant. And so get the word. Get the word and have an understanding. Scripture says that in all thy getting, get understanding. In all thy getting. In all your getting, get understanding. If you don't understand, beloved, you will go, you are going to be to be flawed by the devil. And poor understanding of the word of God. Like some of you, I was getting from you, that's poor understanding. That's a very poor understanding. You, 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 you didn't understand what I, I meant, you know, to, to, you didn't understand it. And poor understanding will not, will not help you out. So please calm yourself down and let the Holy Spirit teach you. That is who, where, where we are lacking the most. Not allowing the Holy Spirit to teach us. Jesus says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you. He will lead you into all truth. So beloved, allow yourself for the Holy Spirit to, to teach you. Nobody is above this. I don't care whether you are archangel or you are whatever title you give yourself on this planet earth here. You know, I, I bishop and, and, uh, and archbishop and whatever. If you don't have the Holy Spirit to help you understand the word of God, you are no match for that Satan. Trust me. How old are you? The guy has been over, uh, it's been around. He was with God. Are you listening? He was with God. How old are you? For you to think that you, you are just a spiritual, well, keep it. But let me just teach you the word. Because it, it works for me. And I believe it works for you too. Amen? Alright. So therefore, if you walk in the flesh, if you walk in the flesh, you will reap corruption. Or if you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you will reap everlasting life. So we just saw that in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Alright? Now, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, we read that if we walk, okay, Galatians, we see that if you sow, if you sow, whatever you sow, you reap. So if you sow into it, if you sow into flesh, you will reap corruption. If you sow into the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you will reap everlasting life. Why? Because Jesus says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will live with us forever, everlasting, forever. So that's why. Now, in Romans here, 8, 1, we see that if you walk after the flesh, if you walk in the flesh, okay, you walk in the flesh, um, you walk in guilt and condemnation. But there's no longer any condemnation for those who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit are you listening okay so now watch this now for verse 5 corinthians i mean romans 8 verse 5 for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh 
But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Are you seeing the, the difference? Please take note of this. To be carnally minded is of the flesh. You will reap the things of the flesh. To be spiritually minded, okay, is life and peace. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is enmity against God. The carnal mind is no friend of God. The carnal mind is a, it has a conflict between God and himself. The carnal mind has nothing, nothing of God. That's what it means. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. It is not subject to the law of God or the principle of God. The carnal mind. Verse 8. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. I didn't write that. So that, therefore, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you want to please God, beloved, you have to show God your faith in trusting in Him, not in your own ability and in your own fleshly desires. Hebrews 11 chapter 6 tells us that. That without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that those who come to God must first believe that He God is. And He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. If you are diligently seeking the things of God, you are positioned to understand the things of God by the Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? If you're not desiring to know the things of God, desiring to... To, uh, to, to receive from God, then you live your life in the flesh. It's as simple as ABC. Beloved, nobody has to, there's, nobody has to kick you in your head for you to get this. This is as simple. ABC. Choose today whom you will serve, whether you be in the side of God or you be in the side of the flesh. But don't say that I am a child of God and living in the flesh. And there's so much things that is attractive these days. So much things. I mean, in no time, some young guy just popped up from nowhere with no name, just popped up, you know, and um, in, in the ministry circles, in the ministry circles, or in the church circles, talking about I have 100, 100 companies, and I, you know, this and, and, and all that, and, and so many cars, and so many those material things, those earthly things that is attractive. Remember, Satan wanted to do the same thing to Jesus, talking, telling Jesus, look at all this, I can give you all these kingdoms. Beloved, <laughs> I can give you all these kingdoms if you bow to me. If you bow to me, that's what he said to Jesus in Matthew, when Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, before he started his ministry. The devil is also offering things. All right? And so you should think about this, that what, what, what is what is this what is the spirits of Satan offering the things of the flesh? Most of the things, most of the time, the things of the flesh are the material things that we crave for, that you want so bad, that you covet, that you you want to kill somebody for it, that you want to lie to receive. Those are the things of the flesh. I'm not saying that it's not good to have a house or to have a a car or whatever but let let god bless you with the things that you don't covet others you don't envy others those are the the materials of the flesh so we're going to see that yesterday i pointed that to you those are the 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 materials or the um the ingredients of the flesh and the things of the flesh are temporal the things of the spirit are eternal the things of the flesh are temporary, beloved. Hmm. Yesterday, I had um, a story. Um, and the story was that there were seven pastors, Christians, 
Christian pastors, let me emphasize that, seven Christian pastors who found themselves in the old Russia, Russia, and, um, you know, and um, they were arrested. And so all they have to do is um, Alicia, really? Eight years you haven't seen your son. You're going to see him very soon. Don't worry. You're going to see your son. Don't worry, you're going to see your son. You're going to see your son. We'll talk, all right? Um, I, will, I will send you uh, some information um, later, up the, you know, maybe on Messenger. We're going to, we're going to, you'll see your son. Anyway, so um, the story is that these seven pastors found themselves in Russia. They were arrested. The only way they, they will be released is for them to deny Jesus that they were talking about. Like in the days of uh, the disciples. Deny Jesus and um, they will be free. And so they didn't. They beat them and all this and all that. They still did not. So finally they, have, they stripped them naked and... Um, you know, took them to, you know, um, Siberia, is it Siberia? You know, that area is very cold. As I understand, that's one of the most coldest places on earth. And they took them there and put them in this cold pond that has even frozen, cold, naked. And uh, just left them in there to just be there till they freeze to death. So they were in there and, um, you know, the uh, commander of the army, he came, you know, warm himself up with blankets and with his vod vodka and cigar and all that. And he sat in, uh, in, uh, in on this, um, um, in this um, uh, building close to but he can see them, that he can even yell and they can hear him. And so every now and then, you know, he would say, are you people crazy? Just, just. Say no to Jesus and, you know, you'll be out. Get, you know, come and get a vodka and warm yourself. Get some blankets and all that. And they will not. After a while, just about half an hour, 45 minutes, they, 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 the guy saw them. They started getting, you know, dark. They were changing colors. You see that the cold has really getting them, you know, they were just about to die. And somehow, some way, all of a sudden, the um, the commander who was drinking his uh, the vodka and warming himself with a cigar and all that, he saw something that he couldn't believe. He thought he was seeing something. He cleared his eyes, only for him to see that there is Kumari. God bless you. There was there was angels, seven angels, who have just come from heaven, just from from the skies, and they were hovering. Or standing on top of each of them and they were holding a crown on and a crown so the, these people were so close to death so close to death that they have frozen and become so blue that they were just you know just a matter of just you know so just as they started falling the angel will put the crown on one their head and they will fall. The angel will put their head on another and they will fall. The angel will put another and then they will fall. It came to the last pastor. And the angel kept going, just going back to heaven and coming back. Going and coming. And the commander was watching all these things like, what in God's name that angels have put the crown on or all the other ones, and they have fallen dead. They are dead. This particular one, the angel tries to, you know, attempts to put the crown on it, and he will, he will, he will stop, and he will take the crown back, and he'll come. What was happening is that in the heart of this particular pastor, he was just about every second contemplating whether she should just to receive that or, you know, come out of this, this uh, uh, just to deny Jesus so that he wouldn't die. He wouldn't die. So anytime in his heart, he, he thought of, you know what, let me forget about this thing here. And then the angel will, will, go, will go back. 
And then in a second when he makes his, his mind, his heart, in his heart, I want to die for Jesus and then he will come. So that was that back and forth. But all of a sudden the angel, the, then the commander says, hey, why, what, is, what are you doing? So the, the, this, this pastor opened his mouth and says, I denounce Jesus. I don't want to die. Get me out of here. Watch this now. So they got him out. They put a blanket on him, gave him a vodka to start drinking. And then what happened? The commander who was seeing all these things took off his clothes, ran into the, uh, the pool at the position of the pastor who has come, denied Jesus to come out and shouted, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. And the angel came and then put a crown on him and he died. <laughs> Are you getting this? When I got this story, I said, oh my goodness. It reminded me of what the scripture says that those who endure to the end will receive the crown. Those who endure to the end. I don't know what you are even going through right now. I don't know what you are going through. But those who endure to the end, the pastor could not endure to the end to receive the crown. But a heathen, an unbeliever, got born again, instantly received Jesus. Like the guy who was on the, on, the, on the side of Jesus on the cross. He says, Lord, remember me when you get to your paradise. Remember me. Beloved, it is, the, the race is not for the swift. Oh my goodness. See, when you come to the place of understanding the gospel, eh, you realize that, you know, it's, it's not about how, how nice you look or dress for Sunday service. It's about understanding who you are and the one that you are serving. Are you listening to me? It's, it's, it's something. It's something. If you come to the place, you realize that it's it's no longer it's no longer it's no longer about church it's good to be there but it's it's no longer all about that it's all about what god has said the promises he's given and um believing and receiving especially you know that that one and only Good thing God did for man. Oh, and as you, I say one and only because without doubt, without doubt, there was no way, there was no way you and I could be where we are. Oh, let me see the time. Well, give you more some more scriptures. So let's read on. Verse 8, Romans 8, 8. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. All right? Verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to God. That's what the scripture is saying. Now, if there's any interpretation of that, you let me know. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. Read Romans chapter 8. We are still in Romans chapter 8. We just read verse 9. Now, verse 10. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead. The flesh is dead to sin. The flesh is dead. So you don't, you don't live according to the flesh. You don't live according to the flesh. You live according to the spirit. You live according to the spirit. Are you listening? You live according to the spirit. Now, so watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. Verse 10 says, And if Christ is in you, 
if Christ is in you, if, <laughs> if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. If Christ is in you, is Christ in you? Is Christ in you? Verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Ah. <sighs> Did you hear that? Did you hear that? <clears throat> Look at verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if, by the, but if you live by the Spirit, you put death, the deeds of the body, you will live. You will live. Therefore, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Therefore, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Are you listening to me? So ask yourself, check yourself. Check yourself and then see why. See why. See why. See why it's so important for you to know that to live in the flesh is, is death. So when you are seeing all these fleshly things, that are people are portraying or presenting. Don't be so attractive to it. Don't be attractive. It will lead to death. We, we, it's a matter of time that we will see the end of it all. Are you listening? The flesh conflict. There's a constant conflict between the flesh and the spirit. There's a constant conflict. Go to Galatians again, chapter. Galatians again. Look at it, chapter um, chapter 5. Go to Galatians again, chapter 5. All right, verse 16. I say then, walk in the, in the spirit. Walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit so that you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Are you listening? Beloved, the flesh will let you go crazy. You are constantly going crazy every day. All right? Chasing the wind. Chasing the wind. Most of the things we are chasing, you're not getting it because God wants you to be with the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? So, it's very important for you to understand that. Now, verse 17 says, For the flesh lust against the spirit. The flesh war against the spirit. This, the flesh is always fighting the spirit. Isn't that what we see? That Satan is always fighting against the things of God because he represents the flesh. Satan represents the flesh. He represents the flesh. He represents the flesh. He, re he presented the flesh to Jesus. If you, Jesus, if you bow to me, I'll give you all these cars. I'll give you all these houses. I'll give you all this money. I'll give you all this, this. I'll give you all that. I'll give you all that. That's the flesh. He presents the flesh. He represents the flesh. So Satan represents the flesh. So the flesh, according to Galatians chapter 5, watch this now, verse 17, he says, for the flesh war against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh they're still fighting going on and these are contrary 
to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish you don't have to do the things that you wish beloved did you hear that you don't have to do the things that you wish galatians chapter 5 16 17 and let me end it up with 18 but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law are you listening beloved this is very important to you as a believer and you must grab it i'm closing right here this is where i draw the curtain continue tomorrow god willing but in the meantime you need to give your life to jesus if you haven't done that and if you have done if you have not done that let me pray with you right now and i know you are convinced that jesus should be your lord and savior so pray with me lord jesus forgive me of my sin i see myself as a sinner and i've done all these things that was not pleasing to you forgive me of my sins i accept you as my lord and savior so that i can also receive the crown you see that 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 guy standing next to jesus he says lord remember me and instantly jesus says today you will be with me in paradise the captain of the russian guard saw what was going on and he was convinced enough that there is god he he went to replace stand in place of this so-called pastor and receive the crown how easy and easy can you miss the crown and so father i pray that those who are giving themselves their life to you right now you receive them you said today is the day when you hear his voice do not harden your heart receive jesus and now I pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit concerning you right now. Open your heart to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit will come and dwell with you and be in you. And he will begin to show you the things that you ought to know. I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move upon your people right now. Baptize them wherever they are. Whoever is receiving you right now, baptize them, baptize them move over them like never before yes open your mouth and begin to just thank him just thank god for the holy spirit begin to thank god for the holy spirit begin to thank him for the holy spirit oh begin to thank him he will give you with the evidence of speaking in unknown tongues beloved don't be afraid that is the language of the holy spirit and then you will begin to see him walking with you walking with you if you have done that i want you to know that you are born again and uh, a new creation bible says that if anyone be in christ he's a new creation all things all things have passed away Be, behold everything has become new accept the newness of god's presence in your life get yourself a bible if you don't have one and begin to start reading well pastor i don't know where to start reading look for the book that says proverbs proverbs p-r-o-v starts from that the rest you see it start reading it all right start reading the holy spirit who is now coming to dwell with you and live in you will lead you into all other areas as he teaches you lead you walk with you talk to you in the meantime if you don't have a church a bible believing church listen to what i said please okay this is a bible this is a bible believing teaching preacher i believe in all other things miracle and the prophecies and all that but all prophecies are in the word of god i'm not trying to talk indirectly against nobody that's not that's not my gift i wasn't called to come and and bash any preacher or any pulpit that that that's not my business i didn't call you mine is to teach you the word of god inspire you so that you come out and be who you are in christ 
Find a Bible teaching church. Present yourself to the leaders and let them know that you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you want to grow more so they can plug you into maybe the new member class and all that and uh, be a blessing to you. Are you listening? But I want you to be with me every day. All right. Same time, 930. Now the time is 930 Eastern Standard Time. So that means um, 130 GMT during your, your lunch hours so that you can take some lunch time and, um, and um, be with me. But in the a very important place, I want you to share this broadcast. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it to your friends, your loved ones, and all, everybody. Also, some of you have been following us. You realize that the crawler is not coming anymore with other information concerning this ministry. Why? Because um, we want to expand our the technology we believe in technology in preaching the word and so we've been you know um getting you involved to for you to um, financially sow into this ministry for us to be able to get this equipment so that we can expand and even give you a portion where you can send you know do your own studies your comments and not that kind of stuff and so we 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 are we are asking you we are not pushing you. No, we never do that. Never do that. Because we believe that giving is as a result of your love for God and the things of God. You don't give to God so that you can receive. You give to God because you love Him. He gives. Your giving don't make God any more richer than He already is. Are you listening? So... When we ask you to give, it's, you are not under any compulsion. As a matter of fact, the most important thing is let the Holy Spirit lead you in your giving. If you want to do that, go to the website. The information is right on your screen. www.patrickwainuministries.com You will see a button there, you know, says donate. Click on it. You can use your PayPal uh, or, your, or your credit card and all that, okay? Uh, secure and uh, or if you want to uh, do by um, a cash app which is instantly right now you can use this number to do that just take this number down plus or um, plus one if you are from outside you know United States okay nine one four five seven two nine eight one six nine one four five seven two nine eight one six so that you can be part of this and uh, when you see that you know we've got in this equipment and you know we're back in the crawler and other segment you see that because you were part of it and you have your 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 area where you can send you know your contributions i mean and uh, of um, the message we, we you know we will you you can be preaching with me together how's that that's very nice all right in the meantime please Share this broadcast. Very, very important. Share it to all your friends, loved ones, your neighbors, even your enemies. They will love you for it. Trust me. Because the Holy Spirit is at work. May God bless you. May He shine His face upon you. And may you know that, beloved, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot go far. Elsie, thanks for coming to close me for the day. <laughs> It's good to know that you are still alive and well. I don't know the family is doing well. God bless you. Well, you don't have no trouble as always. All I want you to know that you need, all you need is your faith in God. And in all you're getting, get understanding. God bless you.